Now we're going to do debugging example three. And in this case, it's that same game, okay? But we have a different problem. I'm just going to tell you right now that this logic is correct. If boss says health is equal to zero, it's going to work. Okay, we fixed that. But if we play it now, what you're going to find out is that the boss has a new feature that wasn't part of the game design. Okay, let me let him go down there again. You notice there's just a bit more going on there than meets the eye, okay? I can't kill him. Okay, not good for the player not to be able to kill the person. So, here's where we're going to use those debugging tools again. So, let's go ahead and start up the game in debugging mode. Okay, so you're using that red arrow. So we know there's a problem. We're hitting him and it's not happening. So the first thing we're going to do is we want to display some information. Okay, now since we're using the global score that comes in there, we want to be able to look at it by looking at global variables. And you'll notice what we can see is we can see, among other things, the score, lives, health, all this good stuff, okay? So we could see all that. We really don't need that this time, so I'm going to go ahead and close that down because we real because the, we are using the score, but what are we looking at? We're looking at the health of that particular object. So what we want to do is we want to go and show the instances so we can get the number for the boss. Now we could also type boss, so let me show you that. If we go in here and we go show local variables and we're just going to type boss, there's our boss variables, okay? And you'll notice there's the boss's health and it did start at 50, so we already know that. So what we want to do is gradually we want to get to where we think it ought to be, which is five times, okay? So make sure you click back on here, that's always a problem. Once you click over here, the game window is not taking any of your score, so one, Two, okay, so far so good. It's dropping down 15 each time. Three, four, oh, look what just happened. I've got a minus 10. So what's happening is it's not hitting zero, is it? It's actually sitting there and jumping over it. Well, if we look at how we wrote our code here, set variable boss minus 15, it's got to equal zero. That's a problem. In general, you should never have it set to equal something, even if that's how you have it set up. In example two, it was set to do minus 10. I purposely changed it to minus 15 so it would jump over zero to show you this. If you sit there and set it equal to something and then change something else down our own, maybe you have a power up, okay? Or an additional weapon that scores and that has a different amount of damage. Now you may not hit that particular number dead on the nose. So what to solve this, what we want to do is not make it go equal to, but we want it smaller than. Okay, now technically smaller than one would be more precise, but typically we just put smaller than zero. Okay, and now if we run the game again, you will see that one, two, three, four, five. There's my five. Actually, in this case, only four, okay, and I win, okay? So remember, when you're testing for a number, you should always do smaller or larger, depending on which direction you're going. You almost never want to do exactly. Now, there may be times you want to do that. For instance, if I, if I pick up exactly five gold bars, well, as long as there's no way for me to ever pick up two at once, now, if you have two really close, I could have two at once, I might skip that. So you still might have larger than such and such, okay? So remember about those debug tools. They are very powerful. There's a lot of good information in there. One other thing I did want to show you about the debug tools, okay, now that we've solved this, is that you can actually step through a game. And this, these are controls up here. So I'm going to pause the game. Okay, you can see it's all stopped. I can just start it back up again and pause it. I could actually restart the game or stop it from here, but once I've got it paused, I have another option here. I can step through the game one step at a time. Now, remember that by default there's 30 steps per, 
second so this is not something you should do for a long period of time but it allows you to see certain behaviors if you want to that specifically happen step by step okay so there's there are other things we can do in here we can actually change the speed of the level when we're looking at it I actually do that sometimes when I'm grading your guys stuff I use the debug mode a lot okay uh, another technique you can do is you can actually have the same game open in a different window so you can be looking at it here and then looking at what you're actually did within the actions and events okay that's it for this particular debugging exercise this was debugging example three